Yusuke Nagata, and as an artist, Nats Tokyo. I'm doing still photography from 2018. I traveled to New York and I met some street photographers on the street. At the time, I noticed street photography can be an art form. I got so curious about street photography, then I started it uh, seriously. I love street photography. I don't need to take photo for my clients. I can take photo for myself. These days, I prefer Kabukicho in Shinjuku because, you know, in Japan, especially in daytime, every people looks robot. They walk same direction and they don't speak loud in public space. But nighttime, especially in Kabukicho, you can see many crazy Japanese people. Even normal people are getting crazy. You can see many types of Japanese people. That's why. I like taking photo in Kabukicho. When we print with enlarger, it will take a long, long time to make one print, right? But that time make me feel I'm a photographer. <laughs> because nowadays, even normal people can take photo with their phones. So only taking photos doesn't make them photographer. As a photographer, we need to make photograph and also present our photograph. That's why I love film. As an artist, we need to present our works, not only making arts. So most important thing is our attitude as an artist, I think. Tons of images on Instagram. So even I took great photo, nobody knows that image my image doesn't exist in this world. So my image is like a, a piece of sand. We need to pick up our image and we need to speak loud. This is my artwork. That kind of attitude we need to be an artist, I think. Artist is not job to me. If you, you want to be an artist or if you want to create something, those feelings make you an artist. My name's Adrian, I'm an illustrator from Australia. Um, I've been based in Tokyo since 2013. Well, I've been drawing ever since I was a kid but I only started illustrating maybe 10, 11 years ago. I think like illustration was always just going to be a natural extension of drawing my sketchbooks and um, making art and things like that. So I've always been passionate about you know, drawing and sharing it with other people. And I was really lucky to be able to turn that into a career, but it took a lot, a lot of hard work too. I don't know where it comes from, but I just love to draw. And like, it's that tactile sense of like, pencil to paper or pen to paper, that once you do a good drawing, it makes you want to do another. And it's kind of got that addictive kind of quality to it. Like enjoying the process then, and if you find fulfillment in that process, then you don't worry about what the end result's gonna be so much. If you just enjoy making it, that will sustain you and keep you going. I haven't called myself an artist in a while, but I do, like, I think now I'll probably change my business card to artist and illustrator and artist because a big part of my work is actually making artwork for myself. It's not necessarily for a client or for anyone else, and that's just for me. And then often that leads to other work anyway. When you think about out loud what it is you do, a lot of what I do is about art and being an artist and not just like, drawing and painting every day, but also if you're doing anything, whether it's freelancing or creating your own business, like you've kind of got to um, live a life that's a little different to what other people are doing. And you've got to invent and create your career or cr like invent your lifestyle. So part of it is being an artist. Anything where you have to yeah, go against what people's expectations are maybe of you or circumvent the mainstream kind of way of living, which is, you know, getting a corporate job or whatever. Uh, and there's nothing wrong with that. Being an artist is hard, and part of that challenge comes from having to 
create your own path, not just your own artwork, but also find your way in life too. I am Aiko Fukuda. I'm an uh, illustrator and multidisciplinary artist uh, based in Tokyo. I love uh, paper and I think the most of Japanese people appreciate the paper still now. And since uh, lots of bookstores are closing down and everybody are just uh, using like, you know, digital to read the books and whatever, I still appreciate the papers, you know, uh, materials. Currently, I am creating an AR pop-up book. So I am researching how to make my illustration pop up on the paper. But also I need to learn how augmented reality works. It's very, how do I say, uh, classic, but also new. Since I've been um, reflecting on myself during the COVID era, I realized that how peaceful Japan is and I appreciate the environment that I have. Instead of looking overseas, I try to enjoy my life in Tokyo. So that's why I started taking a walk in my neighborhood and find some uh, street flowers. Somehow I found some beauty in my daily life. So that's how um, my uh, floral series uh, has been started. I, I feel like most of Japanese people don't want to call themselves uh, their artists. Everybody thinks that it's hard to make for a living being artists. I feel like it's such a dreamy lifestyle. <laughs> and uh, I don't know. For some reason, I don't want people to see me like that. If I say like I'm an artist, it, it seems like I'm very confident person. The concept of artist, it's really like high, like high level of art, like Tatashi Murakami, you know? <laughs> so if I achieve that level, maybe I can finally call myself, you know, I'm artist. Well, you know, when I got uh, appreciated by people, when people say, you know, I, we love your art. We love your artwork. So there is also this word art, art, art. So I'm feeling, you know, involved to the artworks. I'm feeling like an artist, very good feeling. Very, very nice. I think I mostly know my name is Alessio Vitelli. I'm an Italian illustrator from Roma and I'm based in Japan since last year. Well, actually, I don't know if it was my lucky strike, but I was listening to this Japanese band, name is Kikagaku Moyo, and then I made a drawing just on the paper. I just made this drawing randomly and drawing the heads floating in the sky. I've been contacted by the, um, the singer, and they say to me, I know, Alessio, we like your stuff. Can we put it on our Instagram? I say, sure, of course. And after that, <laughs> we start to collaborate. I think that was uh, particularly the, st the time I started to work for the music. I'm not the kind of usual uh, illustrator because, uh, you know, illustrators, they're making rough, rough, and then they draw on top of it. Uh, I mean, I'm just do straight uh, what I have in my mind. So this is, I think, it's a little bit particular of me because I just, you know, so I'm like Jets, you know, you just start playing and that's it. Yeah, and I'm just gonna follow you around. I do feel as an artist, 
but uh, not like mostly of the artists. They are like a little bit bohem, uh, you know, they sleep on the floor. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. Eh? Yeah, I do feel like an artist and I pay the price to be that creative because uh, sometimes being a uh, creative artist, uh, you pay the consequence and then sometimes you you're, you're overthink too much. Sometimes you get paranoid, sometimes you're too sensitive. I'm feeling uncomfortable sometimes when... Uh, this is a little bit deep, but uh, sometimes I'm feeling uh, like people appreciated more my art than what I am. So Alessio is going on the second, uh, is going on the second part, but first Alessio art. So sometimes happen like this, you know, just people uh, love my art, but we don't have a conversation about life, about me, about, I'm very sensitive on it, maybe too much sensitive, but this is the most uh, uncomfortable part, I think. My first exhibition in uh, Daikanyama in Tokyo 2016, the most sell item I sold, it was a, a t-shirt with my face. <laughs> yeah. I became a product of myself. <laughs> I'm Matthew Forsyth. I make picture books and comics and uh, do design for animation and TV. Right now I'm in a writing phase, so I'm soaking stuff up and I'm doing sketches for picture book ideas. I didn't go to art school and I was kind of hacking away at art for in my 20s doing like uh, illustration stuff. When I look at those illustrations, I'm like, why did you keep going? Like, you're so bad. <laughs> you, there was nothing in my work that showed promise, like that I look at. If, if I had come to myself for a portfolio review, I'd be like, I don't know how to break this to you, but maybe you should do something else. You know, I like just kept cracking away at it. And uh, I, did, I think it is because I just love drawing. I love illustration. I love painting. I love the act of it. I made a couple comics that I'm, you know, I was really happy with. I went down to LA and I worked on this TV show for a few years. That was like my art school. That was like boot camp. That was 60 hours a week of like getting notes from amazing artists. These are artists that I had all already like loved. Uh, people like Tom Herpick, Phil Rinda, Adam Muto, Rebecca Sugar, Sue Kim, like all these like animators that I was so like already a fan of. And I was getting notes three times a week and I would have to correct all the notes. And after that two or three years, I was like, that was like a master's degree. <laughs> after that, like try, that sort of like trial, I feel like I had a confidence in my work, a confidence in my compositional abilities. I feel like I like, I felt like I knew what I was doing. I also made a decision where I was like, I'm not gonna waste any more time like doubting myself. You know what I mean? There's so much energy of being like, oh, like I, I don't belong here and I'm sorry, you know? I'm like, I'm not gonna waste any more time. How about I just work confidently and assertively on my work and, you know, like take the failures with the successes. If I can't make a living doing what I love, that's fine. I'll, I'll work in some other field. So that's when I really recommitted to like painting and what I'm doing now. I think since then I haven't had uh, imposter syndrome even though I think I had the deepest kind. Um, I'm Lee Izumida, and I'm a painter living in Tokyo. Yeah, this is my style. The <laughs> Sorry. This black one, the shade. Why did you pick this painting? Because I like flowers. Start when I was a kindergartner. Never stopped painting, actually. So it's a hard question because I painting a lot of stuff like flower, fish, my memories. I had a hard time to get a job because like a lot of people say, "Can you paint this one?" Maybe background have to be blue or yellow and stuff. But I didn't like that. So right now. Like, uh, I can't paint what I want to paint. 
I had an exhibition last year. It's about the, my home country, because I couldn't go back to my home country because of uh, Corona. My mom took a lot of pictures when I was uh, young, so I haven't seen the old picture, actually. And uh, she just sent me a lot. I don't know why. My dad and my mom sent me a picture, and uh, I'm trying to figure out what was my old memory. So I painted those stuff. Mean to be an artist? I don't know, because I'm just painting because I love it. Not the cool person, like I'm an artist and stuff like that. So I just, I like the painting, so I'm, that's why I'm doing. I hope I can never stop painting when I get old, like grandma. That is my goal, paint forever. It's very really simple. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I'm a very simple person, actually. <laughs> it's a good philosophy. Yeah.